I just realized the church bells are probably too loud for you to hear me. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for a little bit of a different video this week. Another kind of video that I love to watch and that I just feel people don't do as much anymore is that classic old style sit on the end of your bed YouTube video for a little chit chat. So I'm bringing back the sit on the end of your bed for a little chit chat video. Or at least I'm bringing it to Laura Jane Illustrations. I thought the easiest place to start would be with a little Q&A. I get a lot of DMs about how I create, what I use, so I thought it would be nice to do a video where I kind of answer all of the questions that you have about my process. Um, and yeah, you guys sent some really good questions, so I'm going to try and get through as many as I can because um, I expected a lot of questions about like the technicalities of what I do in terms of like apps and methods and things, but you actually asked some really great questions in terms of like creativity and inspiration and all of those things, so I'm going to dive in and answer as many as I can. So let's get started. What do you use to create your illustrations? Um, I use Procreate. Um, the iPad that I use is the iPad Pro, the smaller one, which I think is 10.2 inches, um, and the first generation Apple Pencil. In terms of those of you who asked about what iPad I would recommend, um, if you're just starting out for a hobby, definitely start with the more affordable iPad. If it's something that you're doing because you're an illustrator or a gra graphic designer, then I definitely recommend looking into the Pro and thinking about whether you want a bigger screen or a smaller screen. As long as it's compatible with the Apple Pencil, Procreate will, will work on it and you'll be able to do some illustration on it. So yeah, it's basically about what you need the iPad for. Some of you asked me what I would recommend for Android or what I would recommend for not, if you're not using an iPad. Um, so in terms of Android, I haven't had any Android for I think three, four years now. Um, so in terms of Android drawing apps um, or things that are compatible on like Samsung tablets and things like that, I have absolutely no idea. So I'm definitely the wrong person to ask there. But I do have a good alternative that I actually used to use before I bought an iPad, which was a graphics tablet. If you look up graphics tablets or other illustrators who use graphic tablets, you'll probably see that they use a Wacom. I think that's how you pronounce it, graphics tablet, and they're actually quite expensive. I'm not saying if you don't want to buy an iPad, iPad, go and buy a really expensive graphic tablet. What I'm saying is if you're interested in starting digital illustration and you don't want to splurge on an iPad just yet, go on Amazon and have a look for some graphics tablet because there are some really affordable, um, like basic graphics tablets and they're a really good place to start. How do you deal with creative block? For me, creative block happens when like I'm working on a specific project and I just kind of feel like I don't have anything else I can give to it right now. So the way that I deal with it is I I step away from it and I do something else. Something, something else creative if I feel like it and if not, just something else completely. I also find just looking at other creators' content on Instagram or on Pinterest um, helps me get inspired and also sometimes going back through my own previous work and looking at things that I did before and kind of thinking about how I could recreate them to kind of fit my style because it's always changing um, also helps me get inspired. How do you keep the tiny things you draw to reuse again? For example, stars and hearts instead of having to draw them each time, how do you keep them within Procreate so you can cut and paste them? There are a few different ways that I do this. When I do my custom Christmas portraits, there is a base to that portrait that is the same for everyone that I do. So the actual like characters and last year it was a wreath that I put around them. I saved those pieces as PNG files in the files of my iPad. You could also just save them to your camera roll. 
and then when I open a new canvas I import all of those pieces and then illustrate on top of them. Another way that I do it is duplicating a canvas so for example think about uh, the Hey You posts that I do or the post-its of positivities um, I don't redraw them from scratch every time I go back through my gallery and I pick my most recent one and I duplicate that canvas and then I change the text and change the colors to make it into a new illustration. The third way that I do this for the little things like stars and hearts is I have created my own stamp brushes. Um, this is something that I actually have on my list of tutorials that I want to show you guys how to do but basically you can create brushes of textures, patterns and stamps from your own illustrations and then instead of using a line brush you can just use this brush and dot it around the canvas for your own stars and your own hearts. What website do you use? Um, your page looks so creative so I am assuming that you're referring to hellohappy.com that has definitely been something that I've done over time but the basics behind it is that I use wordpress.org and I have my own uh, domain who inspired you to start drawing and how did you start up and how did you get the news out? Basically what inspired me to, to start was just having a space that I could put my illustrations on Instagram. A lot of times I get asked how did I build my audience. When I started I didn't think about the numbers, I didn't do it for a big audience, I did it for me and because I did it for me everything that I put on there was very authentic. I wasn't creating to try and impress or please other people, I was creating things that I liked, that I liked looking at, that were an extension, as I said, of me and my personality and I feel that that's why my audience have grown, is because the content that I put on my page, the subjects that I talk about are authentic to me. It doesn't feel like fake or forced or trying too hard to be somebody else that has a high number of followers because you also want to have a high number of followers. If you want to start, just start. But don't start for the numbers. Don't start, don't go in because you want a big audience. Go in because it's something that you enjoy doing and creating. Whatever is something that you enjoy in your life that is almost an extension of you, create your space around that because you'll come across much more authentic because you are being authentic when you share it. Um, don't try and force to be a version of yourself that you think will attract more followers. Be yourself and the people who follow you will follow you because they like what you're doing because it feels authentic. Apart from Procreate, is there another app that you use? Um, yes. There are a few different things that I use apart from Procreate, but they're more so related to editing. The two main other apps that I use are Lightroom and Photoshop, which are both Adobe apps. Lightroom, I have it both on my MacBook and on my iPad, um, and I use that for photo editing. I use Photoshop for taking illustrations and turning them into like prints and products and things like that. How long does it take you to complete art? That really depends on what the illustration is. Um, if it's something that I'm drawing from scratch it could take anywhere from a half an hour to an hour to do if it's a post for Instagram. However if it's something that I'm reusing from a canvas that I've already created so something that I've duplicated it can be a lot faster. It also depends on how much hand lettering versus illustrated details are in the photo. So I think probably the shortest amount of time it would take me to do something is probably 15-20 minutes. The longest would be an hour plus. Last question! <laughs> Somehow we have managed to make it to the end of the comments. I have no idea how long this video is at this point. <laughs> Okay, so the last question here is, how did you get a career in illustrating off the ground? Okay, this is an interesting question um, because I think a lot of you assume that this is my full-time job. This is not my full-time job. This isn't even technically my career. I don't know how people define career, but for example, I did not 
study illustration or graphic design in university I studied education I have a Bachelor of Education all of the opportunities that I've had in terms of illustration and all of the work that I've I suppose being asked to do um, have grown from my Instagram account so as I said I started this space as a hobby and it grew into something that I didn't expect it to and that has opened up a lot of doors in the last couple of years and given me opportunities that I would never have expected like illustrating a book. I do work very hard because I do a full-time job but also this has kind of grown into something that is a full-time job in itself but just doesn't financially support me a hundred percent right now yes i love doing all of this i love creating i love making new content i love exploring new ways of making new content but there is a lot of work there is a lot of hard work involved in it and i am sometimes very aware of how many hours of work between my job and this that i put in on a weekly basis but it's part of what I want to do right now. So if illustrating is something that is your passion and your dream or you know it's something that you want to explore, go for it. But start with it from a pace of love first. Um, find another way to support yourself financially so there's not so much pressure on um, your creative thing and put a lot of love into it and I genuinely believe that when you do, when you put a lot of love into something, a lot of passion, a lot of authenticity into it, it, it grows organically because people are drawn to it. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this sit on the end of your bed chit chat video um, as much as I've enjoyed creating it and sharing a little bit more insight into my journey and my experiences doing digital art. If you liked the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be back again next week and it will be a tutorial next week and I'm planning to do a tutorial on lettering and fonts because that's something I've been asked about a lot recently so come back next week um, for that. Until then, 